All right, we are back with Gidon Bromberg in Tel Aviv, and I'm in Los Angeles. Um, you certainly have an impressive background, Gidon, uh, education and economics, law, specifically environmental law, co-founding EcoPeace Middle East, um, a whole lot of work and, like you say, sweat and honors and everything along the way. Share with us how you've evolved in your career a little bit, and are you at the point where this is what you always wanted to be when you grew up? Great question. So, so I, I think that, um, uh, like many good careers, I fell into this career. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, when, when I finished my law degree, I, I thought I was going to work in human rights law. Mm -hmm. I knew that I wanted to work in Israel. I knew that I wanted to contribute in peace. But I never thought that I was going to work in the environment. Um, I fell into the environment field because I saw an advertisement that attracted me. And I thought, <laughs> well, you know what? I have those skills. I'm going to need to learn a little bit more, but but uh, I'm willing to give it a try. And from there, opportunity came after opportunity. And I had this opportunity to do a master's in international environmental law in Washington D.C. and was sent to the United States, um, and which happened to be there at the year that the Oslo Accords were signed. Oh wow! And um, so so I chose my thesis to be on the environmental implications of the peace process. And I asked the question, uh, was peace going to be good for the environment or was peace actually going to lead to more environmental demise? Interesting. And that's where the, the uh, rationale of the organization came from, that, uh, uh, that actually the environment wasn't on the peace agenda and that the way to get the environment on the peace agenda was uh, perhaps to create, help create an, an environmental organization that would put it there. But, but really my career uh, and the organization changed tremendously because you know, the original idea behind the organization was far more led by environmental protection, mm -hmm. um, a, a much more typical advocacy approach, uh, 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 tree hugger approach um, uh, to protecting uh, uh, the commons, the River Jordan, the Dead Sea, and, uh, and our, our other uh, uh, transboundary streams. Uh, but as the peace process collapsed um, uh, as an organization, and, uh, and I personally identified that, hey, you know, we, we sort of lost our way um, because there was no development taking place. We were back at war. Uh, the Second Intifada had broken out. Uh, the whole peace uh, relationship had collapsed. And that's where um, uh, really the organization completely changed. And, and, and my role and the, and the role of the directors and all of our staff became far more complicated. We came to understand that we'd actually created a model for peace, that our ability to work together for a common purpose with a common understanding sort of exemplified the type of peace that we wanted to achieve. And, and therefore, um, uh, uh, my career path changed tremendously from, from much more of, of, of the typical advocacy with the legal skills uh, uh, leading the way um, uh, to far more skills of compassion, of, list, of listening, right. of conflict uh, resolution, <laughs> of grassroots activism, of building constituencies, of you know, working with school kids and, uh, and residents and, and mayors, a whole different set of of skill sets um, uh, that, that, that had to be developed um, and of course I, I think most importantly uh, finding the synergy it wasn't that you know, we stopped becoming advocates we continue to do the advocacy work the top-down work that, that perhaps you know what I was trained originally to do mm -hmm. uh, and helped me the most but equally to find that right balance and synergy with the bottom-up the community-based work and um, and you know, to, in that in that sense, um, you know, I've, I've constantly had to retrain myself, and I think all of the the co-directors and many of our staff uh, have constantly um, uh, needed to continue to learn and, and adapt our ourselves and the skills that we need. Am I satisfied? Um, I mean, I have moments of of, of, of real uh, wonderful pride sure. where I sit back and think. This is incredible. This is remarkable, both 
you know, because of the work we do, but more importantly, the results, uh, the real improvement on the ground. But then, you know, so many times, uh, you know, we continue to see the tragedy around us. It's a life tragedy around us that uh, continues every day, and that's real pain, and and and, and that requires real, you know, inner, inner strength to, to to continue, you know, to overcome. So, um, uh, am I, you know, where I thought I would be? No, I never imagined being a, a, a director of a regional environmental organization. Um, have I got lots of satisfaction? Absolutely. Sure. But also lots of frustration because uh, for every step forward, there are steps back that are being taken place, that, that, that are taking place uh, that worry me greatly. Yeah, it's, 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 well, clearly you're passionate about it. It's interesting because I, I um, left, I was with Deloitte and Touche real quick, and I left Canada recruited to be the uh, executive director of a nonprofit global leadership development organization in Florida is how I got to the States and everybody, including myself, told me you're crazy to take a pay cut, go to a nonprofit, do all this stuff. But you know, um, there's a bigger purpose. And, uh, but you never, you know, I don't know if, if too many people do expect, especially leaders, where they end up necessarily. They've got a view where they'd like to be, but it, um, and the world changes so fast, but you obviously got the passion for it, for the environment. Um, and I, I, I see so often what you're talking about, the potential of sustainable economic development, um, the synergy between that and peace. It, it just is, you know, the most brilliant things are simple, I always find. And, and I, I think, you know, a friend of mine who I, I want to introduce you to, his name is Stephen Hecht. He wrote a book called Nonflict. And it's about right. resolving conflict. And he actually just came back from Israel working with Palestinians and Israelis. So you do need to speak with him. Um, tremendous, tremendous. And we're trying to bring that into our business world as well with, with people because it's always about people. But I want to move, add that to, um, you know, I always compare sports and business as well and how that works together. And one of the most important things I find, and I'd like you to comment on it because I think you have it, is, is having that quote-unquote why with what you're doing. Um, a lot of younger people talk about that a lot, and I love it. What is your why? Um, how it impacts the team, performance um, in sports, sustaining a winning season. You don't always win the championship, but teams, you know, teams always tell me management that they, 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 they want to win the championship, but the mandate is to at least have winning seasons. So with all of this in mind, talk to us about, about this in terms of your efforts, your results of bringing together Jordanians, Palestinians, and Israelis, and actually reviving a very, very famous river. So, so you're clearly referring to the River Jordan, right? <laughs> um, and you know, this is a river that half of humanity identifies with. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you know, it's part of the the childhood, you know, growing up stories um, for the three peoples of the Abrahamic faiths. You know, Jews and Christians and Muslims together. Um, they're not exactly they're not the identical story, but 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 the river is very much associated with magic, with with miracles, with with renewal, um, uh, uh, with, with uh, 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 purity. Yet nothing could be further from reality on the ground, mm -hmm. and, and and very much due to the conflict, uh, the river Jordan south of the Sea of Galilee has been turned over these last 60 years into little more than a sewerage canal. 95% of its freshwater resources were diverted by Israel, by Syria, by Jordan, instead of fresh water flowing down the river. You know, security fences, mines, sewerage, and other, and other waste mm -hmm. have been dumped into this river that half of humanity sees as holy. Um, so um, it's no surprise that uh, uh, you know the organisation uh, 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 focused early on on uh, uh, rehabilitating uh, the Jordan River because it tells the story of the price we all pay. I mean, the strength of the demise of the River Jordan is it's a lose, lose, lose story. No one has won. In fact, in particular, the communities 
uh, on all sides, Israeli, Jordanian, Palestinian, along the Jordan Valley, have lost tremendous economic opportunities. Because this is such an f- iconic river, they could have uh, been attracting millions of tourists to come and, uh, and be baptized in its waters or, or walk <laughs> along its banks you know, to, to seep in, to take in the history it's interesting of, of just all in, of our forefathers. It's interesting, just interrupt for a minute. I literally had coffee yesterday with somebody that told me, um, he's Christian, um, loves Israel, he was married at the Jordan River. So, so you know, so the, there is a Jordan River north of the Sea of Galilee that is still free flowing and clear. I hope that he was married there <laughs> <laughs> and not on the southern part because I'm sorry, it's it's it, you know, it's just no longer attractive. It's been so heavily uh, demised, and, and that's unacceptable. So, um, uh, you know, the, our ability to really change things on the ground mm-hmm. um, uh, on the River Jordan has been remarkable. But not surprising, because as soon as you can, you know, uh, raise awareness of the lose lose, and you know, uh, in the midst of conflict, you need to do it carefully. Um, uh, we found, we find that working with uh, students, working with kids in the earlier stages, is very effective sure. because they're open minded. Yep. Um, you know, the, we ask them to answer some simple questions: Where does my water come from? What's happening to my waste? What's the water reality of my neighbor? And we literally, for the Jordan River communities, sort of always end up at the River Jordan and, you know, stand next to the minefields and the fences. And they're often the first time because, you know, as a mine place is the border, it's the back door. You can somewhere you can't go to. Mm-hmm. Um, bringing people, you know, to see the demise and coming to understand uh, uh, the lose to lose. Um, uh, is very empowering. So, um, you know, first of all, working in schools creates a constituency because working with school kids means that, well, the parents are involved and teachers and school principals and then the broader community. When all the schools are involved in learning about the demise of the River Jordan, it gets onto the plate of the mayor. And it's very effective when, you know, a class presents their research to the mayor and the conclusion of the research comes and says, well, in order to correct the situation, you need to work with the other side because mm-hmm. the river is shared. No one can solve the problem alone. So, hey, Mr. Mayor, how are you advancing our self-interest? Sounds like a leadership uh, thing. Absolutely. It, 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 and, and you know, you, you know what, 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 what has been our, our strongest experience, in fact, is that those that, that have the hat of leaders often don't lead. I mean, some do, but that's the exception. Mm-hmm. The majority of the elected officials or the appointed officials tend to be followers. They tend to be uh, scared and risk averse. Mm-hmm. And when you create a constituency of people, it doesn't even need to be a majority. They just need to be vocal. They need to speak to self-interest. Then you know, those that have authority often will follow them. They, they're the so-called leaders, mm-hmm. but the true leaders are the school kids. The true leaders are the school teachers and the school principals, and then the activists. Sometimes you do you get the mayor and the ministers that truly have a leadership vision, but that is the exception. And that's what we've managed to achieve in the Jordan Valley by speaking to you know, you know, quite simple self-interest, you know, the, the economic cost. Um, uh, the, the, the cultural heritage cost. You know, one of the most effective ways of changing uh, uh, the attitude of some of the water ministers in our region um, was to talk about asking the ministers, well, do you remember fishing on the River Jordan with your father? Wouldn't it be remarkable <laughs> if you could do that today with your child? Right. Because, of course... They can't even get near the river. It's mined and fenced and it's sewerage. And you know, you, you literally see the coin drop, that emotional connection and uh, uh, the, the constituency building and the understanding that there's a, there's a community that, that want to see this change. Um, uh, the economic opportunities, they're critical. Um, mm-hmm. Highlighting and, and in much of our work, you know, we, we don't just... Um, 
uh, 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 promote awareness, we undertake research. So we uh, have undertaken economic studies that, that, that really bring you know, sort of dollars and cents to the economic loss, but also to the economic gain if we were to work together. Right. And we've shown that we can transform the economy of the Jordan Valley, currently from a $4 billion economy to a $73 billion economy. If just we can work together and focus on the river and the rehabilitation of the river of, of, of sort of the lifeblood that brings prosperity again to the, to all of the peoples of the valley. You know, there's and one. Um, one sorry to interrupt. There's one one lady that uh, I don't know if you ever heard of Maya Angelou. No, I haven't. she's uh, uh she's passed away now, but she's like this. Um, she's written a lot, major quotes, and one of my favorite quotes that she's always had, and I use it a lot, is um, even in my business is most people won't remember what you told them. They won't remember everything you've done, but they will always remember how you made them feel. And if you're talking about hope of economic interdependence and, and opportunity, you're talking about, man, yeah, I do remember when I went fishing with my dad. Um, that moves people more than anything in addition to the negative emotion of, of fighting and war and whatnot. So you gotta, you've got to get that positive emotion that gets people back to, um, like you're saying, you know, this is important and, uh, it's all perspective of, um, what are we, you know, what are we, what are we doing here? <laughs> you know? Uh, absolutely. And, 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 you know, this is critical. I mean, when we look at, at, uh, uh at, at a depressed economic area and, and the Jordan Valley today is perhaps the most depressed economic areas, uh, area in our three countries. Um, there's pockets of 40% unemployment, 50% youth unemployment. You know, the, the security services uh, have let us know that you know, there's some 5,000 young people fighting for ISIS in Syria and Iraq that come from this region. It's because they have no hope. Right. They, 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 they have no future. And um, uh, that, that's you know, it's not the only reason, but they become vulnerable sure. you know, to... Uh, to extremist ideologies, and that's a wake-up call for everyone that, that that we all have to take responsibility. It can't be that one side's wealthy and the other side's poor. This is real interdependency. It's in everyone's interest to make sure that there is a uh, a, regi a, regi a, a reasonable living standard for all of the residents of, of this shared uh, valley. Otherwise, we all pay absolutely. the price, yeah, wherever can. we might be living. Yeah, absolutely. And it, and you know what? It can happen anywhere. People say it can never happen here. It can happen anywhere. Um, so, I, you know, I agree. How do you how do you view the responsibility and, for that matter, the opportunity for you got, you got the public sector, the governments, the nonprofits, you've got the private companies, and you've got, you know, business people that can, um, and there's a lot of business people that would like to do something, but maybe don't know how to do it. How do you, how do you bring the responsibility and the opportunity together for everybody? So we're very much trying to create win-wins. You know, there's right. no, there's no evil. You know, there's very little evil. Um, you know, uh, it, it's about understanding self-interests. Uh, but not any type of self-interest. Self-interest that can lead to mutual gain. And uh, you know, when, when we work with with the uh, elected officials, then we understand that you know much of their self-interest is about being getting publicity, getting into the media, you know, to get re-elected. Right. Because you know that's the name of the game. And you know, and, and that's you know, people say that's a dirty business. I don't think it is. I mean, that's what democracy. That's how democracy is built. Right. Um, for the business community, the bottom line is profit. That's reasonable. I mean, that's how our economies are built. I mean, Absolutely. people need to, people need to create wealth, um, but it, it's an issue of, 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 of not taking that to greed. It's, it's, it's an issue of of striking the right balance of of uh, of, of creating a framework um, that uh, helps create leadership in the government uh, uh, sector in the business community. Um, uh, in uh, other, in, in, you know, in, w amongst civil society, which which we sort of come from, um, 
that uh, that, that can develop that can develop that common vision. And you know, we found uh, 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 trying to move forward in a master planning scenario. So so we raised a million euros from the European Union um, uh, to undertake the first time effort to create a master plan for the Jordan Valley from the Sea of Galilee all the way down to the Dead Sea. That was a three-year effort of, of having to work together with local government, national government, the business community, Israeli, Palestinian, Jordanian, broader interests of the international community. I mean, does it mean that we've come to agree on everything? No. <laughs> and, 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 and you know, from the outset, we, we knew that, 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 that we're not going to achieve that. It's certainly not not overnight. Um, but but we have carved out. Um, and, and today we're we we have a, a short list of projects that uh, everyone is signing on to. So it, it's not everything, but it's identifying what we can agree on, with the understanding that we're all going to gain. That we're going to build more trust. You know, once you, once you, once um, you, more wealth. Absolutely. Once you win something for the first time, it feels pretty good, and you want to win some more. Um, and winning doesn't mean necessarily someone else losing. Like you said, it could be win, win, win. And I, just to complete this section, I, I haven't seen the movie yet, but there's a movie about this young um, African girl that's really good at chess. And she starts winning, 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 and gets better, gets better, gets better. And then starts, long story short, gets noticed, and internationally even, out of Nigeria. And they say, well, do you win all the time? And she said, no. Well, then you lose. She says, no, I never lose. Well, what do you mean? Well, I win, and well, then you lose. And when, well, no, when I don't, I don't lose. I win and I learn, she said. Excellent. Pretty Excellent. brilliant. That's so... All right, we're done with this part of it. Um, you're doing great stuff. Thanks so much for sharing all this. Absolute pleasure.